Innovation has the potential to enhance growth and employment. It's creative destruction. Technology creates opportunities, it also destroys some. Overall, I strongly believe that it's a net positive. Once you embrace technology, once you embrace change and innovation, it becomes easier for you to catch up with other developed economies. So the future is about innovation, the future is about government and business working together in ways they haven't done before. The future is dreaming like our kids dream and thinking exponentially. Udacity has a very close connection to Jordan in that we will educate lots of people tech skills with the world's best skills in areas like machine learning, deep learning, and even self-driving cars. In the last 12 months, we have established a customer support hub in Jordan to service our customers across Europe, Middle East, and Africa. We recognize the potential that Jordan could offer based on the availability of technical and language skills. The government of Jordan for a long time has provided a great place for multinationals to build a stable footprint and team. We're very quickly expanding our presence in the region and we hope to reach many more customers in the coming year. We're just about to start um, a pilot program for range extended electric buses in the city of Amman. Combining this technology with the bus manufacturer's technology, getting this stuff into Jordan is going to have enormous benefits in, in fuel savings, cost savings, and a cleaner environment. I couldn't have been happier when we discovered Elba House and that they'd been there for 50 years and that they make buses and they do a good job of it. We are using the ionization technology it's environmentally friendly, just mimicking the processes of nature. This initiative will be a very important one for water, for food, and at the end for national security. We are building human capacity in this new field. So today and tomorrow, as we see the regional market be interested in this area, all the capacity we've developed in Jordan is applicable in these other markets. Jordan could absolutely become an extremely important hub for drone innovation, drone services, drone ecosystems in the Middle East and the larger Africa region. We're actually right now training Jordanians in the use of our technology to expand its applications across the country. Jordan is extremely progressive, works very quickly. There's a lot of infrastructure and opportunity economically, politically, um, to actually do big projects and do them fast. We need to introduce new technologies and new techniques, especially areas related to stem cell regenerative medicine, where we lead the way in our laws, in our talents, in our scientists, in our laboratories. As a young generation of nuclear engineers working in a nuclear plant, we are aiming to enhance peaceful nuclear energy in several applications, such as producing and marketing radio isotope that is used in medical, health, agricultural, and industrial applications. Jordan will bring highly qualified and trained manpower to work in the field of peaceful nuclear energy in the region. The follow-up is a wood workshop, a metal workshop, a training center, uh, laser cutting, 3D printing, robotics. You have the traditional way of manufacturing and at the same time you have the digital way of manufacturing. Hello World Kids is a project that combines education, entrepreneurship, and technology in one product. Our focus is to build a new generation with excellent technical skills, entrepreneurial skills, and high competitiveness. Uh, we onboard aspiring entrepreneurs and train them. We invest in them, and then we help them accelerate their businesses, meaning that what would typically take a startup two years to build and spend tens, even hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars, we help them build it in a fraction of that time and cost. We managed to uh, tap the gaming uh, side by creating the Jordan Gaming Lab, by working with schools through the App Challenge, by teaching the teachers how to work on applications and, and, and mobile development and design with their students. We will see highest employment, uh, and uh, a, a growth in our startup uh, scene here in Jordan. Microsoft's experience as an investor in Jordan has been extremely positive in all aspects. I've seen many young people in Jordan who really uh, want to want to change the world and want to become part of the global universe of great engineers. Jordanian people are, are very interested in innovation, very willing to encourage it. Um, and remove barriers to it. And I think that ultimately that's going to be very important for the entire region. Accept the failure that comes along with innovation and to create the kind of culture that supports that is really important and it's impressive how Jordan is, uh, is doing that. 
like any country, we have challenges in Jordan, but more opportunities than challenges. And I love your youth. I think they're the future of your country. So I think Jordan's future is in a good spot. Now, I've always been fascinated by the ability of entrepreneurs to, to take a brick and see in it a house and build a whole city. But new enterprises need solid ground to build on. And that's Jordan's vision. Now, as you can see, Jordan has managed to create an innovative, enabling ecosystem, obviously something that's essential to creating the kind of growth that Jordan wants to see over the next several years. And certainly, it's inevitable that the youth in the region uh, are going to want this kind of ecosystem to move forward. Now, the talent is here in Jordan, and it's now really about harnessing the hunger uh, to provide the kind of ecosystem and to really create the kind of future that the young people are asking for. They want you to listen to them, and they want you to take a bet on their ideas and innovations. Now, the people you're about to meet are a select group of entrepreneurs, they're talented, they're self-dependent, and they're pioneers of viable competitive products. I want the panelists to join me now on the stage. Now, over the last several days, these folks have been able to gather, not just here in the Dead Sea, but also in Amman. They've been talking to each other about ways not only to create this ecosystem and to further this ecosystem in Jordan itself, but also to broaden this uh, experience for the entire MENA region. They've developed a bond already, and I'm very, very excited to introduce them to you. I'm joined on stage by the president of Expedia, Mon Bouti, Bhutani. I'm also joined by the co-founder and CEO of Liwa, Ahmed Moore, the CEO of Mixed Dimensions, Mohammed Daslak, Abir Sekali, inventor and architect, as well as the co-founder and co-director of Amon Design Week, Reem Huri, who's the CEO and founder of Come On Inc., and Kaushal Shah, who's the founding director of Aspire Services. Now, I want to kick off by just giving you a brief overview of who these folks are and what they actually do. Um, I'm going to kick off then with Aman. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to be here and uh, very grateful to have this opportunity. My role at Expedia is to lead the brand Expedia group. That includes the global brand Expedia, Travelocity and Orbits in the US, um, eBookers in Europe, and What If in Australia, among other smaller brands. Uh, today, I'm excited to announce that Expedia has opened a product and technology office in Jordan, where Jordanian engineers will be building software for our brands around the world and serving our customers globally. Reem Khoury. Um, we aim to, at Kamen, to deconstruct the misconception that impact and profit are mutually exclusive. So we design, we use human-centric design and social innovation to design the models of the future for an inclusive economic system. Um, I can, so an example for that is uh, we worked with, a, with an enterprise that wanted to focus on customer excellence and uh, everyone was complaining about the youth. Uh, they're complacent. They want to work in the public sector. It's the culture of the region. When we spoke to the youth, we realized that one, no one asked them what they wanted to start with. And two, um, brain science tells us that the reason why they didn't know how to get to where they wanted to go is because when we live under chronic stress due to unemployment, due to poverty, <coughs> due to being a refugee, our ability to use the skills that we need to innovate completely shuts down. But if we create the conditioning environment, not design the solutions on their behalf, but just create that conditioning environment for them, then the sky is the limit for economic and social mobility. And our results were fantastic. The, all the youth had a financial and social plan, mobility plan. All the companies that invested in us had growth in their bottom line because they saw better performance and better teamwork. 
And most importantly, the social enterprise we designed broke even a year prior to plan and to industry standards because its impact was its very compelling business proposition. Mohammed. Yeah, so it's Mohammed. I can't <laughs> pronounce it today. So um, I'm from Mixed Dimensions. Mixed Dimensions is a Jordanian company. We started at the Royal Scientific Society. Uh, we're focused on 3D printing and gaming R&D software development. Uh, in 2013, since we're working on uh, I IPs and want to commercialize our technology, we decided to join the Alchemist Accelerator in San Francisco. At that time, they were calling us the crazy Jordanians. Um, we built our technology, we, we built our product market fit, then we came back to Amman because we believe that the talent that made me and my co-founder Baha is already available here. We wanted to build our engineering team. We have now around 50 engineers working with us in Amman, and uh, we're uh, engaged and focused in different uh, initiatives to spread 3D printing, 3D technologies in general, whether it was in Jordan or in the region. Um, I'm proud to be here uh, with, this, with this panel, and um, uh, I believe that we're going to be doing a lot of things for Jordan moving forward. Excellent. Thank Abir. you. Hello. Thank you, uh, Hadley. Um, I'm, well, I'm currently co-directing co a beautiful initiative called Amman Design Week that's uh, been initiated and supported by Her Majesty Queen Rania al-Abdullah. Uh, but I think we'll get into Amman Design Week as we move into the discussion, and I'd like to uh, talk about uh, my personal story and innovation that I've been uh, developing for many years now. There are 60 million displaced people around the world. And as a result of this crisis, you know, communities are struggling to survive. And more so, there are one billion people that live without adequate shelter worldwide. The most fundamental aspect of human existence is shelter, and it's a, you know, a universal human need. And these kinds of numbers is kind of devastating, and it causes one to feel helpless. And so we, as designers, uh, look at problems and try to find solutions. And so I decided to act. And I started thinking about shelter that could help uh, rebuild and uh, help refu refugees in Jordan uh, envision their new lives. Not just an adequate shelter, but a dignified shelter. And so I designed a special uh, solar absorbing fabric that basically absorbed the sun's energy and turned it into uh, solar and thermal energy and so thus providing comforts of daily life like electricity and water. And I won an award for my design, but I'm most importantly, uh, the design has the social potential to be a dignified shelter and also uh, weave displaced communities uh, together. It's a home. And as I continue developing uh, and, and actually trying to build the, the tent myself, I, um, I, I gained deep insights into material and building processes and collaborating with various communities and people from you know, different uh, backgrounds and, and professions as well as communities that needed shelter um, you know, made me understand that architecture can and must adapt to uh, different contexts, social environments and settings by using local materials and building technologies. So, it wasn't about imposing a shelter on a community, but developing a design uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that the community can be engaged with. And, and I think in this context, you know, architecture becomes a social and cultural um, uh, practice. And this is where I found the true and meaningful, um, timeless meaning of innovation and technology. So my innovation is making a home. Kasha. Okay. I come from India, but I've been here for 15 years. Uh, I've set up an outsourcing services model to service uh, top-notch online and e-commerce uh, companies in the US. Uh, it's been a delight to be here for 15 years. Uh, we've created some of the best uh, skills uh, uh, comparable to anywhere in the world. Uh, we started off, of course, in a, with, a, with a very small team, and the innovation has to be to, to continue, continue to skill, reskill, and that's because of the changing uh, technologies all the time, especially in the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that very really successfully. You have a very strong core team of Jordanians. All our, all, all our resources are Jordanians, actually, and 
and uh, it's, it's been a fantastic journey. I think uh, it's, it's, it's great to hear that a company like Expedia has come here because that's the kind of company we service uh, in the US and you will see the benefit uh, of the resources over here which are uh, hungry for love, uh, uh, sorry, hungry for, uh, to learn and, <laughs> and hungry for love also. Well, I, on, on, a, on a lighter note, I found my love in Jordan, so I was, I was hungry and I came here. So, so it's been great. Uh, they are diligent. I've, I've, had, I've, I've had my clients telling me that it's not just that we give good quality, but we like the Jordanian people. I've, I've recently been to, a, uh, to visit one of my biggest clients in, in, the, in the US, and, and he, uh, two years ago he told me that, uh, oh, we're going to finish, we're not going we're not, we're not to outsource anymore because we're going to take everything in-house. Two years hence, I met him just like two, two months ago, and he said, you know what? Even I like your guys, so I'm going to, we're going to continue. So, so it's been a delight. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Ahmed Moore. It's a huge privilege to be here. Thank you, Your Majesties, and thank you to the World Economic Forum, and to the moderator and rest of the panelists as well. I co-founded a lending business. Uh, we're a mission-oriented company, but really uh, private sector, uh, profit-focused. Uh, uh, we focus on small businesses and delivering uh, one product, really, a trade finance uh, product to them. Uh, we've underwritten about $4.5 million, most of that here in Jordan, to 100 small businesses. Uh, although we also operate in the UAE, we've raised uh, $4.8 million from local venture capitalists as well. So Dash Ventures in Silicon Badia and MVI, which is run by Mr. Fadi al -Nur. Uh so uh, when we think about enterprise value over time and, and kind of the tech component of the business, it really goes to the credit assessment. Uh, we live in a part of the world where access to high fidelity information is difficult to come by. And so you make use of what you have. Uh, and so we've built a, a credit assessment techniques that incorporate behavioral data uh, for our uh, assessment. Uh, so it's really just a, st a statistical model and it uses user-generated data uh, to help us make an assessment of whether somebody's going to repay a loan. But it's working and we're growing and, and we love being in Jordan. I'm very happy to be here. So I want to kick off with a beer because we're talking about an ecosystem and enabling young people um, to do all of the things that they want to do. But essential to that is a home. And right now here in Jordan, for example, you have 1.4 million refugees. You have 5 million uh, Syrian refugees. A big question on everyone's mind is what happens next? How are we going to save ourselves from having a lost generation? And what you're really working on is creating homes for people so that they can inevitably have the skill set and the confidence that they need to be empowered to actually do the things they want to do. Well, as, as I said, you know, again, you know, the most fundamental aspect of human existence is shelter. And I think that once we pay very close attention to solving the problems of shelter, I think everything else, like, will naturally fall into place. All of our other issues, all of our other problems with regards to, you know, social systems and education and, and, and the rest will all fall into place. And one thing that, of course, and I'll, I'll come back to your question again, but just to talk about Amman Design Week as a, a Jordanian ecosystem. Amman Design Week is essentially a learning platform that aims to raise awareness about the importance of design in our daily life, with the underlying mission to foster a culture of design thinking and collaboration in Jordan. So what we essentially do is create uh, various programs throughout the year that culminate in a 10-day kind of event. Um, and uh, these programs basically uh, include things like community outreach programs, uh, student programs, we do exhibitions, uh, we work with designers, craftspeople. Uh, so there's a really a, a variety of programs that uh, 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 transmit skills, uh, but also uh, uh, puts together uh, different stakeholders, so we work with the government and we work with the private sector and we work with different people and put them all together to engage in a conversation um, in order to move forward and kind of propel the momentum in, 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 and advance uh, where we are today. And going back to shelter again, you know, when I started designing my tent, uh, it was about the product. And it was about, you know, how do I get the product out on the market? But then as I continued through this process, I realized that it wasn't 
uh, or I shouldn't be looking, and one shouldn't be looking at shelter as a product, and because it's, it's, it's a bit more complex than that, but more of like an instrument of change, which means that you really need to integrate the community into the shelter building process uh, in order to give them ownership and a sense of agency and, and make them really engage within the built environment. I want to bring Raymond here on that okay. sense of community, because that's something that you've worked a lot on in your research, hasn't you? Yeah, so the, the way we look at it, it's really about the process. It's, uh, again, when we're talking about an inclusive economy, uh, it also, it's not just include, inclusive in, in terms of beneficiaries, it's also participatory in, in its essence. So thinking about all the stakeholders as producers and beneficiaries of the impact. And there's no shame in saying also the commercialization of, of, uh, of the tent. I mean, we are so scared of talking impact and profit. There's no shame in profit. Um, we Sometimes we hear a lot of companies still talking about corporate social responsibility. And again, uh, when we look at the, the fact that the base of the pyramid is a $5 trillion market, why are we talking responsibility and we're not talking opportunity? Why are we still addressing uh, the issues uh, without engaging everyone in the conversation and aligning their economic and social interests? And I think that we have many examples uh, uh, of that. Talk to me a little bit, Kashal, about what the government's done right in Jordan in terms of supporting you that other governments can learn from. Oh, they, they're supporting all the time. They have the GIP program, which is a graduate internship program. There are many programs along the way. I see many institutions uh, helping with the training, lead, uh, soft skills. There's always something going on, something new coming up. Uh, so, and, it, and, then the, and the universities keep churning sort of uh, fresh graduates, which are sort of quite ready. The raw talent is very powerful here. It just needs a little mentoring and, and, and training. So it's, it's quite Feel good. free to jump in here, Mohanad, because essentially you guys are in San Francisco and in Jordan as well. You're employing Jordanians. You're looking for Jordanian talent. What is it about the Jordanian talent itself, whether it be the education system, the skills, the raw skills are there? Yeah, of course, it's, it's there. The, the nice thing about what we're doing is that we're working in algorithms and IPs, and it's also uh, uh, new for companies outside and for people outside Jordan. So it's more of people who have the mindset to problem solving and building these algorithms and technologies. The thing is that because we're from Amman and we're from Jordan in specific, we believe that our engineering capacity can compete with different other companies out there. And this is by far what we heard from companies like Microsoft or Autodesk who are we're proudly uh, competing with them. The thing what we did, we, we built something called Hakatari from Hacking and Atari. So Hakatari is our program uh, within universities. So we go in with universities, uh, we work with the students, with deans, with, with professors. Uh, we work on things that can actually support in what we're doing and can support these students. So and actually we, we built uh, a new syllabus that can be implemented within these universities. And currently we have access to more than 5,000 students. The thing that I found is that one, one very interesting story is one of our brightest engineers actually used to work in a bakery. So you can imagine that there's so much talent in Jordan. The thing is that you need to source that. And what we, we noticed is that we're actually competing with the talent in San Francisco and in the US. Uh, they're not better than, uh, than us in anything. It's much more about the mindset, the way you do the problem solving. Problem solving is something universal. If you guide these guys and girls and everybody who's working with you, through uh, uh, proper problem-solving techniques, then you're going to be able to do this. Um, proudly, now we have 16 patents under our company, and it was all developed through Jordanians and through my co-founder as well. Yeah. I'd love to bring him on in here. Yeah, I wanted to add a quick example. Obviously, very early in our experience working with the Jordanian government. But I'll give you a very tangible example. When I talked to people here, one of my concerns was that it's hard to hire for Expedia. I tried to explain how we hire, how we come into a country, how we like to immerse new employees into the Expedia culture and the technology. We, we really want them to understand the core platforms. And I said, well, we need a recruiter who's really, really good and it's gonna take a while for us to hire a recruiter. 
you will be shocked to hear that not only did the government help us bring a recruiter, but she was perfect. In fact, to the point that we have now hired her and she's part of our team because we don't want her to help our competitors. Um, so it just, it's an example that you know, Expedia has gone to 60 countries in the world and opened offices. We've never had support like that. It is so tangible, the support, um, that you can really come with any, anything you need. And on the talent, I'll extend your idea. One of the senior engineers working to build the office in Jordan, he's a concert level pianist. He turned, um, he taught himself how to write code. And the first thing he told me when he called me from Jordan, he said, Aman, the people here are hungry. And that is something that I learned over the last 20 years. We can teach people how to write code. Hunger is within people. And if the youth of Jordan have it, then I could easily see Expedia and many, many other companies have very large offices here and truly just have amazing jobs in software. Ahmed, one of the challenges, of course, is funding. <laughs> What's the picture like in Jordan today and regionally in terms of these startups? Uh, I think it's, it's challenging, but it's challenging everywhere. Uh, that's more of a reflection, I think, of the uh, still kind of the early embryonic stage of the ecosystem than anything. So it's not a it's not a mistake that the people who backed us at the very uh, early stage were all uh, successful entrepreneurs. So Mr. Fadi Ghandour, who founded Aramex, uh, Mr. Ali Al Husari, who's uh, uh, built uh, Hikma Pharmaceuticals. These are the people, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Fawaz Zawmi, of course. These are the people who took early stage risk with us. Until we have more exits, I think, in the region more people who've uh, independently uh, built, I guess, a portfolio uh, uh, and, and people who can offer also guidance, uh, we won't see a lot of the late stage uh, kind of development that you see elsewhere. How do you create that type of environment? Because right now in the Middle East, especially because of the lower oil prices, we've seen two years of slower growth and the private sector's really taken a hit there. Uh, how do you create a sustainable level of funding? Yeah, I think it's incumbent upon the private sector to be a little bit more active than it is today. We need to be more competitive in Jordan as a private sector. Uh, it's very easy to entreat uh, the public sector and government to do lots of things for us, but the fact is that it, we have to also commit to training uh, staff. Uh, I was very, very excited to hear that Expedia is coming. I mean, here's a company, which is a global company, investing in, in local talent. Uh, those people will likely go on uh, eventually, after hopefully they've produced uh, for Expedia, will likely go on and develop companies themselves. But it's an ecosystem approach. It, needs, it does take time. There's no panacea or, or silver bullet. What are some of the things that they could take elsewhere, other countries who want to do something similar to what Jordan has done in terms of not just education, but also in terms of enabling these companies to come into Jordan and really create the jobs that are needed across the region so desperately? Um, Mohana, do you want to kick off? I think mostly one of the things that uh, we should focus on is the, is the ecosystem itself. One, one major thing I wanted to, to add on, on the investment thing. Uh, we don't have in the region uh, investors, uh, much more, uh, much investors who can actually do commercialization of technology. Most of the investors are focused on services and e-commerce. And this is changing now. We're seeing investors who are actually being educated by, by other investors outside, and other investors are actually looking at Jordan. So part of what we're doing with, with Mixed Dimensions is that we attracted Chinese and US investors. When these, when these investors came in and joined the board, joined the company, we, we, we noticed the difference in our vision, in our growth, and the way we look at the technology itself. We uh, believe that for Mixed Dimensions and other companies that, uh, that already went into San Francisco and came back as well, this knowledge can be spread among everybody. And this could actually attract companies to come into Jordan because when you hear about companies who, ha who got investment from the hardest place to get investment in, in San Francisco, uh, they will come in, they will see what you're doing, and they okay, if you guys can do this, then the talent here is ready for these companies to come in. So it's more about the ecosystem and the mindset. I always focus on the, on the mindset itself and how to build people, the youth, government, and everybody around that mindset to attract these investors to come in. Can I also okay. add, uh, I, from our approach, the regions are very, very compelling. It's a big market, but it has to be approached in a federated way. It would be so encouraging uh, uh, if we could begin to say that, uh, you know, Jordan and, and other regional partners are working together to allow us access, you know, across each country. Uh, and I think you're beginning to see some of those activities occur 
uh, at you know the leadership level across the board. Uh, but Jordan is really a great place uh, uh, to kind of project into the rest of the region from. So most of our staff is based here. Uh, we have an office in the UAE, but it's small. We really service the Arabic-speaking uh, uh, environment or, or the, the market out of, out of Jordan. I mean, if you want to weigh in here, because of the research that you've done and what you've seen really at the grassroots level in terms of what it takes to get people involved in terms of the creative level, but not just that, how they grow as entrepreneurs. Yeah, so uh, we, we look at when we're talking about the future economy and the inclusive economy, it's also about future models. We're talking about the exponential organization. So we're talking about scaling the impact and not necessarily just growing the, uh, uh, the company itself. And there are fascinating frameworks that we're seeing and that we're actually using in Jordan and in Saudi. And um, it's something called collective impact. And again, this is about the sharing economy. It's how can we leverage the existing resources, the existing infrastructure, the existing networks, and organize ourselves in a way where we don't, we stop working in silos, but everyone collectively works towards a common goal and an impact. But again, the, 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 the collective impact framework requires a very small team uh, for this centralized infrastructure. It's a participatory approach, it's structured, it's data-driven, it, it leverages technology, um, but it requires a team of six to 10 people to create change at a national scale. Again, we're not just talking about, we, the way we look at social innovation is innovating even in the way we implement these innovations. So how can we be extremely competitive, extremely lean, with exponential impact and exponential profit. And I'm happy to say that we are using this uh, to advance social innovation here in Jordan and also we're working on it in Saudi. You know, I'd like to add uh, to that discussion by saying that I think it's really about the values that Jordan is projecting to the world. Um, I mean, we're in the middle of political unrest and we're kind of grappling with social responsibility and. And I think, um, you know, what characterizes the heart of Jordan is the fact that it's welcomed so many different communities. And even, you know, when we were doing our research for Amman Design Week, we were trying to understand what local design was. And the conclusion that we came up with was that our locality is in our diversity. And this is something that we really need to embrace. So. I think that's a very important uh, value that uh, Jordan uh, carries and that really uh, you know, speaks uh, you know, uh, to the global uh, world on, on many different levels. It's the perfect place to, be to, social, to, ex to have social experiments. Mm -hmm. It's literally the perfect spot to well, do what about the social scaling? experiments. What about scaling these businesses, these startups? And not just the funding, scaling the businesses. What are the challenges there? And how can the governments and the private sector actually work with these entrepreneurs to grow the businesses, create the jobs? It depends, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. it depends on what, what's, what's your target. So for example, if, if your target is regional, then you have to structure your business towards doing that and scaling it up. If your target is global, then this is a totally different story. One of the things that I always advise, so I'm privileged to be mentoring some, some young entrepreneurs. When we got our first advisor, we got him through Facebook. So we sent him a message, told him, could you be our advisor? Because we, we don't know how to sell our product. So he just, after five minutes, he just sent me, okay, just come back when you're in San Francisco, come in and tell me what you're doing and I'm gonna help you do that. So scalability depends on, on the market that you're, you're going after. And most importantly is that uh, entrepreneurs should actually learn from others. They should learn from their fellow entrepreneurs. And this, there's something very, very interesting happening in, in Jordan, in Amman, is that most of the entrepreneurs, they know each other. So we're always grouping. So when, whenever there's a term sheet going for one of our entrepreneurs, <laughs> ah, it gets circulated among every, everyone else so that we can actually see if this is good or not. Ah, don't do this, don't do, add this term if you want. So this, this thing is actually building up on what, what we're doing. So it depends, mostly the advice is depends on the market and where you're going and what's your product market fit. Yeah. Uh, I think in Jordan's perspective, uh, scaling a business has two aspects to it. One is scaling your business and the revenue and scaling it to create employment. 
And that's what I think we can do very easily out here. And I, I've proved that model. It has worked so far the last 15 years. Uh, and so how do you create? The raw talent is there. Uh, every company can sort of easily train uh, companies like Expedia. If you, if you, when you're coming in, you're going to train so many more people, and you will see it's easier to do. Uh, all we need to do is get more companies interested to come into Jordan and set up base here and, and, and then create that employment uh, in numbers because this is the only industry which can give uh, employment in numbers and can, can sort of take care of the youth unemployment out here. And uh, for us, actually, I mean, I, yeah. I agree. Uh, we think of, when we think of scale, we think of two components to it. Uh, one is the product uh, and, and then the other is the distribution. Uh, and so an analogy, you know, penicillin is a product, an antibiotic. Uh, you can take it orally, you can take it intravenously. The way you take it matters. Uh, for us, we've built a product. We really rely on our partners in government uh, and elsewhere to help us with the distribution. Uh, and so the long-term work of building bilateral trade agreements, of rationalizing regulatory regimes, whatever it is, that helps us uh, scale, even as we invest our internal resources for scale. I, I do want to add to the idea of having foreign companies come in because I think um, very rightly the entrepreneurs locally must look at the market in the region. But for an Expedia, I think what we're looking for is talent. And if Jordan has plenty of talent, we have the scale globally anyway. And the way global companies are structured, we build for the world. And I think it, in, in a way, what that allows us to do is to sort of get around this question of scaling the market, because if you produce the talent, then that talent's gonna go out and do other things, and then the market and everything else grows with it. We're running out of time, but I just wanted to go down the panelists and ask them, what's your one hope for the future, given all the things that we've heard today, given the progress that Jordan itself has made in terms of creating this ecosystem for entrepreneurs? And I'll start with Ahmed. Ah. Uh, so we have a very positive vision in the country. It's inclusive, it's, it's progressive, uh, it's positive. Uh, I, I think education. So my wife works at the Queen Rania Foundation, actually. And so I hear a lot about how much uh, the country is investing in education. But when you think about uh, the workforce of today, of the future, uh, that, that's kind of the only place I think that one can invest. I think we have to play the long game, and I think Jordan is playing the long game already. So it's just we need to keep on at it, and we will get the results. Uh, His Majesty's vision has been there since a long time. Since I've come here, it has been there, and it's progressing in the right direction. And we just have to play the long game. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's to see uh, different types of collaborations happening. And you know, as, as the architect Hassan Fathi once said, it takes one man to build a house, but ten to to build a vision, to, to build an entire village. And I think that if, you know, different uh, people from different backgrounds and different sectors kind of join forces, then that creates a very positive movement uh, uh, towards change and, and reform. For me, I would like to get back the maker movement back into Jordan. So we're known for being makers all our lives through our ancestors. Now with technology, we can actually build that. We can build on, on top of that. With 3D printing, with IoT, with technologies, Jordan could actually become that hub for innovation and for, uh, for entrepreneurship. Um, we're, we're moving into that direction, uh, and I'm hoping to see that very soon. It is there. Uh, I'm excited about the outcomes. Uh, there's so many entrepreneurs out there. Uh, I'm loving it. <laughs> Um, I'm hopeful that we will be launching a collective impact towards advancing social innovation for an inclusive economy in Jordan by the end of the year. So I'm hoping that you'll all join our movement. I was going to say that I hope for 250 engineers that Expedia has here. <laughs> but if you're going to ask me what, I, what is the one thing I'm hopeful for, then I'm going to tell you a personal story. Uh, my father was a refugee. He, he and his family moved from Pakistan into India when India and Pakistan were partitioned. And so if you want my one hope for the world, then it's going to be peace. And I think that'd be fantastic. As you can see, an incredible group of people working to make things better, not just in Jordan, but in the region itself, and giving a lot of hope to us as we continue these conversations here at the World Economic Forum. I'd like to thank the panelists and thank our audience. His Majesty, Her Majesty, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.